Stand by to initiate release sequencer. On my mark. Five. Whoa, express elevator to hell. Going down. Two. One. Mark. Hello, my name is Mark, a.k.a. Derringer. Today is Sunday, November 25th, and you are listening to episode 184 of the Instant Action Podcast, your weekly source for Planetside 2 news and information. As always, brought to you by great listeners like you via the Support the Show tab at instantactionpodcast.com. As you guys heard me say last week, uh, I was going to have Drew on this week's show, and Drew was nice enough to join me. Drew, how are you doing today? I'm doing pretty well. Now, you were playing a little bit of World of Warcraft before I got here? Yeah, I uh, some friends invited me to a, a raiding guild again. So Now, is that, like, is that like cheating on Planetside 2? <laughs> I, I feel like it's more cheating on EverQuest, but, uh, you know, my heart is always with EverQuest, so... All right. Well, you, I did tell you that I had to cancel my WoW subscription to pay for the anniversary bundle. Yeah, I'm doing my part by uh, by paying for it instead of you. Okay. Well, at least one of us is paying for it because uh, I, I literally canceled it so I could buy the bundle. Yeah. Because I had to buy the $80 bundle. Well, it's sorry, the bundle. $90 bundle with 10% off because yeah. I am a member. That's good. <laughs> you should be excited about the uh, upcoming features then. Uh, I am excited about the upcoming features, and we'll talk about that a little later because, uh, like I said to you when I asked you, a lot of people want to know more about Drew. You're you're the new hotness in the Planet Side 2 community right now. You know that, right? Uh, yeah, I've, I've heard uh, a few conversations about myself. I mean, uh, I was saying to you before, when I watched the most recent live stream, when you walked off screen, the comments were screaming for you to get back. Yeah, it's this crazy phenomenon. I guess I'm uh, a cuddly little little teddy bear for them all. So I think it's the beard. <laughs> it's a pretty good beard. <laughs> so do much with it. So, so I, I mean, I just to kind of appease the listeners and everything. I'd like a little to know just a little more about you. I guess you know where'd you grow up? Where'd you go to school? You know stuff that happened before you came to Planet Side Two. And of course, don't really reveal anything that you don't want people to know. No, it's all good. I um. So I grew up in Portland, Oregon, uh, for most of my life, and um, my dad kind of raised me early on on uh, shooter games and, and MMO games. So I started really young, I think around the age of six, um, playing Team Fortress Classic and EverQuest 1, and um, I think dad built my first computer when I was seven or so, and so I got to play those with him, and, and uh, it really kind of sparked a lot of the passion that I have uh, for gaming now. Um, and so... You know, through my high school career, I spent more of my time not working on schoolwork and more of my time working on uh, games and just playing games in general. Um, but I did get to take a, a small game design class in high school, um, and that kind of gave me more of a, a fire for actually following what I wanted to do. Man, to tell you, I'd be thankful you grew up when you did and you didn't grow up when I did, because my first computer was a TRS-80. And I had to program my own games in DOS oh, in order to play them. And I actually had to save them onto one of those tape drives, mm-hmm, which, mm-hmm. which is the, you know, the physical, you know, tape that you put in a Walkman or whatever. Yeah. And it would never save right. And it was, they were always awful games. So be thankful you grew up when you did. Yeah, I was very lucky. Though I was introduced to some of the old DOS games with uh, with MAME and whatnot. So I did get to play, you know, Mappies and all of those different games. Well, that's good. And it's it's interesting that your dad was so big on getting you into stuff like that. I tried to do that with my daughter, and she wanted nothing to do with it. All she wants to do is yeah. play things like uh, that that pigeon dating simulator. Oh, that game is great, though. That, <laughs> game, is, that game is amazing. She wanted the big body pillow of it, and I wouldn't let her. <laughs> <laughs> no, Dad and I, um, every Monday, my mom would go out to a um, sewing group, and so then we would go in and order KFC and then just play Team Fortress Classic together, I think was the, the better moments that I had. That's awesome. That's really awesome. I mean, my stepson and I would play things like Mario Kart and all the old games like that together, so uh, I can say I have some of that same stuff, but... I don't think we ever ordered KFC. <laughs> you should try it sometime. Maybe that's what we're missing out on. 
Yeah. So yeah. I, I know because we're, we're friends on LinkedIn and stuff like that. I, I have some of your background. So I know that yes. prior to Daybreak Games, you were at Bungie for a while. You are also war, at Wargaming Seattle. Um, I, I'm dying to know what it was like to be part of a testing group for Destiny. Um, so with, te- with uh, Destiny, they I think like six or seven months before they actually released the game, they hired on something like 300 extra. T- um, so I was part of that group that actually went out. Um, it was a lot of fun. It was really interesting, though um, the hours were not quite as nice as uh, you would think. Um, working 80 hours a week is, is pretty brutal, especially when you're playing um, the same 20 hours of content over and over and over. Yeah, I, could, I can understand so, that for sure. Yeah, so I think that was the big thing. We definitely knew it was going to be a big deal, especially when um, I remember a moment during the alpha. We had just announced the alpha and uh, had just launched it, and... Um, Sony servers died because they got too uh, too many people hitting it at once, um, and so it was kind of just a oh yeah no this is going to be a really really big thing. So um, I do remember the the launch day and, and how big of a uh, a deal it was with everybody there. I mean, Destiny was just the the biggest thing ever for the longest time, and yeah, it I had mean, a really big budget. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's for damn sure. But you can say that you were part of it. Yeah, um, and I was at the launch party, and I was uh, there for the first raid and for all of the um, the many, many things that were there at the beginning. Um, unfortunately, because I was on contract once the contract expired, um, they just didn't renew it because they had, had to basically let go of 290 testers. So, a little crazy, but, you know, not too bad. I, I do seem to recall that that definitely happened, so um, it sucks, but... I guess it's the industry. It is life. And it's, yeah, yeah with uh, with Test as a whole, Test is a very, I, I feel like, underappreciated um, group of people. Um, and they're kind of, especially when they're all on contract, um, they're kind of just thrown around. I've heard horror stories from some of my friends who used to work at Nintendo and Microsoft and all of these things about, you know, walking up to their uh, office, scanning the card and it not working. Um, and so then they had to actually go talk to security and find out that they had been let go the day before. So that reminds me of really sad practices. Yeah. That reminds me of, uh, what the heck was the gaming company by me? The one that Kurt Schilling was running. Oh, oh what, gosh. What game did they have? They were in Rhode Island. I forget. It's it, a very similar story. I'll, I'll remember it after we're done with the show. Um, oh, was it, um, I should know this and I don't remember it. It was, <laughs> Yeah, I don't remember it. I don't want to pause and look it up, but it was very similar to that where everybody, basically the entire company folded and everybody yeah. got let go. Um, Kingdoms a, of Amalar. Thing. Kingdoms yeah, of Amalar. That's what it was. It's, uh, uh, it's a very common thing in the games industry. And I think uh, just this year, um, there's been over a thousand layoffs in the games industry as a whole. So it's kind of a, a trying time to be in the games industry, but it's, it's still my pride and joy and I, I wouldn't go anywhere else. I'd be bored. Well, I have to say from everything everything that I've talked – and you and I talk occasionally offline, you know, not podcast-related and stuff like that. But I can see from your, my interaction with you that you, you de- definitely have a true passion for the gaming industry. Yeah, it's been my life the entire – like my entire 25 years of life, it's been, you know, a part of my life. The God, you're time. only 25? I'm old enough to be <laughs> yeah. your father. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, when I was 25, that's when my daughter was born. That's like the huge turning point in my life. And here you're just creating games. I mean, what are you doing yeah. with your life, really? Well, my parents ask me that all day. So, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and Thanksgiving was this week. So oh, yeah. did, did, uh, they, did you get the single person treatment? Oh, well, somewhat, but it's all good. So moving on a little, you also did stuff for Wargaming Seattle. I'm not familiar with them. It was a, a studio that was pulled out of um, uh, Gas Powered Games, the company that did Dungeons. Um, and they basically uh, they went broke and they were going to uh, go bankrupt and lay off all of their people, but they got bought out by Wargaming. So they were basically saved and rescued to work on um, a couple new projects that I can't really talk about. That's fine. But, uh, I started there for as QA for about a year and a half, and then um, due to some things with uh, 
I, I basically told the balance designer that he was wrong with his balance design and didn't know what he was talking about. And um, he told me that I was a, a lowly QA and didn't understand, you know, balance design. So I uh, did a play test, um, set it up, and proved in front of him, his boss, his boss's boss, and all of the executives um, that he was very wrong and didn't understand. Um, and the next week, they hired me as a designer. So. Oh, I, I was all ready for you to say that it just went downhill from there because you <laughs> no. stepped on the wrong toes. And <laughs> I, I did continue to do that. Um, I. I'm very passionate about making sure that the games make sense for the player um, and that it makes sense going forward from a, from a design standpoint, from a game standpoint. Um, and so, you know, there's, I'm, I'm willing to go to bat in a lot of ways, uh, sometimes more often than I should, but to make sure that things are done right. Um, so I can't tell you how happy it is to hear you say that, you know, out loud. Because sometimes, yeah. <laughs> sometimes as a player on the outside looking in, you wonder if everybody has that mentality. So it, it uh, definitely, it definitely can be frustrating. Um, I know that uh, at least the the direction that we're going uh, with myself and Rel, we, uh, I, I feel personally that the the direction that we're going as a whole is is a very positive direction, and um, I, you know, more to come in 2019. But I'm hoping to see a lot more success. Well, I'm glad that you work well with Rel. That's a mouthful to get out. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Uh, I I like Rel a lot as well. I mean, some sometimes the community really shits on him, and uh, it kind of makes me mad when I see that because I've dealt with him personally, interacted with him personally, and stuff like that. And he's always been the nicest guy and the level. Yeah, of- he's a really good guy. Yeah. He um he he works very hard. His work ethic is is in a major like immense it's it's phenomenal work ethic um and it 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 does definitely disappoint me when i see people who are just trashing on him for the sake of trashing on him but um it's kind of the role that he's accepted as a kind of lightning rod i suppose Uh, my boss at work likes to say that someone always needs to wear the black hat yeah and it feels like that's what he does at times uh, and some, some people are happy wearing the black hat. Like my boss loves to wear the black hat because then he can be the asshole and, and doesn't For mind. Sure. So, uh, it's, I, I kind of see Rel doing that exact same stuff. Uh, he played, uh, he went, he came and played laser tag with us at one of the SOE lives and oh, yeah. just to see him running around giddy as a schoolgirl, it was, it's, it was very rewarding Yeah, I bet. <laughs> to see him that out there like playing. A lot of fun. So there's a there's one moment I want to tell about him specifically. There was a uh, we went to a, a pizza place a while ago, um, and he was shooting, or he was doing a, a zombie shooter. You know those arcade zombie shooters? Yeah, yeah, with the with the actual gun. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And was it uh, H- House he, he of the kept, Dead or something? Something like that. But he kept shooting his allies, and um, <laughs> I wanted to point out that I think he's a true NC main. Yeah, he he, uh, he definitely is. Keeps shooting his friends. <laughs> <laughs> so let's let's kind of segue into since we're talking about rel and stuff like that let's segue into planet side 2 and daybreak games so had you even heard of planet side 2 before joining the company had you played it yeah so i actually my first character that i created was back in 2012 oh so you were um, there for launch yeah pretty close i think i was a little bit after launch but um i still have that character it still exists on my private account but um i never really played it too much um, that being said, because I was uh, fairly well known in the EverQuest 2 community, um, when I was interviewing for uh, the job as a whole, I got to meet some of the people. Um, one of the guys from Blaze of Glory, which is a, a fairly old school name, um, but Mergoth uh, actually used to raid for one of the top uh, raiding guilds in the world in EverQuest. Mm-hmm. Um, and so because of some mutual friends, I actually got in touch with him and he kind of gave me the lowdown and the rundown on, on how the game functioned and um, I got to play with people like Hazy Ninja and some of those people as well. So, interesting, interesting. I I really wasn't sure what your uh, introduction to the company because sometimes when you, I do, obviously I'm not in the gaming industry, so there's a lot of times when you're going into an interview or a job interview with a company that you don't know much about the company that you're interviewing for. For sure. Uh, let alone have a product that you can quote unquote use and things like yeah. that. So it's, it's always curious to me if, uh, if you've ever heard of it before. Like I, I work in the stock transfer industry. So I work for the largest stock transfer agent in the world. And before going to the company, I had never owned stock before. 
So I wondered if it was very similar with you and Planet Side Two. But like in, you said, in this case, it's a it's a little different. I have about eight thousand hours in EverQuest Two, so mm-hmm. I've played their games quite a bit, and I've been there for for ten years. So I've been playing um, Daybreak games for ten years now. So so should I not talk about EverQuest Next cancellation? Oh God, <laughs> well, <laughs> that's that's not probably the best subject to uh, talk about. But um, <laughs> no, I think it's um it's definitely like something for for people who are interviewing and for people who are um, looking for jobs, if you find a a company uh, and you don't understand or don't know anything about them, do your, um, I think that is the the biggest thing you can do to improve your chances with interviews. Yeah, you really, you really do need to. You're absolutely right. Um, I wanted to throw an icebreaker question in here because, but you're doing such a good job in this interview. I don't (laughs) even know if I need to, but uh, I wanted to ask you what your favorite curse word to use at Daybreak Games is. Well, personally, mine's probably fuck. But uh, <laughs> um, I, I know Rel's favorite is suck my nuts, and, and uh, we use that quote quite often. So. You know I have that pulled as a sound clip, right? I'm sure you do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love to use that on our TeamSpeak server as one of my Pretty sound cool. clips. Uh, yeah, that is, I know that's his favorite, his favorite term. <laughs> So, I know when you came on with Daybreak Games at Planet Side Two, you got sucked right into construction. So, how did that really come to be, and how do you? I mean, because you're, you're known out there as the quote unquote construction guy at Planet Side Two. I mean, did you were you hired specifically to work on that, or was it just that's the first thing that got thrown thrown your way? So, um, I'm more of a technical designer so i do a lot of system work Um, that's just kind of what i'm good at um so when i was hired first off i was just hired as a game designer so Mm. no i wasn't hired specifically for construction i some people think you were yeah i'm I'm very (laughs) aware that some people do uh no i'm i'm not like that um I was given that task um, originally because it's a very good introduction to our systems and how kind of janky and wonky some of the systems can be and how to navigate through multiple sets of systems and, or, and to see how they interact um, and just to make sure that all of these things function. Um, I also, it basically gave me a chance to um, kind of simplify some of the problems that were going on inside of the construction system um, and then also to give myself a uh, you know, construction is basically my baby at this point because I've spent so much time on it. Um, and so I'm the go-to now when it becomes, or when questions come up about construction specifically. Um, so it's a lot of just, um, it was a very good introduction to how our stuff works. Mm-hmm. Um, and it basically gave me uh, something to feel proud about and, and to feel pride on. Uh, and I, I think it's done very well considering where it was before and where it is now. Um, we, we've seen a lot more people um, uh, using it uh, in in ways that weren't being used before, and I feel like the removes, or mo- removal of hives um, as a whole kind of simplified and fixed a lot of the problems that were going on. Because I feel like hives as a whole was was a kind of a poor mechanic. I'll agree with you there, and I I, I won't I won't uh, like lie or anything like that. I'm not really a fan of construction in Planet Side 2. This has just been my opinion since the beginning. Um, I do think that the addition of things like the orbital strike, uh, the router, the flail, things like that have made construction a little more tolerable, in my opinion. But in its original state, uh, I I, I hated it. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, Um, no, I mean, absolutely. I think... um, uh, I would I would suggest at some point to give it a chance. I think that um, some of what we've been seeing in terms of how it can be used efficiently um, with the router and then also uh, the fact that the vehicle pad um, doesn't cost nanites anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, so you're able to consistently pull lightnings, consistently pull ESF specifically. Um, and it, it's actually been used uh, by a few of my friends as well to um, help teach new players how to use the air vehicles and, and to um, give them the chance to play air without actually having to worry about anything else because they know they'll just be able to come back and immediately pull again. Um, so it's kind of a, a neat system, I think, and, and when used well, uh, it can do some pretty pretty heavy um, zone control and, and some pretty heavy damage as well. Oh, it definitely can. I mean, like I said, the orbital strike alone is a game changer within Planet Side 2. And yeah, absolutely. I, I've always felt that 
prior to it being introduced, that was the the biggest omission from the original Planet Side in Planet Side Two. It's just it needed to be there and never was. So I, I'm really glad that it's there now. But uh, I've, I've been playing a lot with the guys from B Way and to watch them place their routers and stuff. It's, yeah, routers are a game changer. It, it's a absolutely crazy. Game changer for people like. Um, I really respect the way and recursion in terms of how they do their point holding and um, the fact that I think that them trying to fight it at really uneven odds is, is just fantastic to watch. And it's, it's um, kind of how you play at, at a higher level is, is uh, playing both the objective and playing at really like disadvantaged fights just mm-hmm. kind of shows how much skill you have. No, I, I definitely agree. And that's why I enjoy playing with them at times to see what they do in certain situations. And they put their yeah. videos out there too all the time as well, which I get a kick out of watching those. This, <laughs> now, this, yeah. this podcast is going to turn into a, a, a commercial for freaking B-Way and Recursion. <laughs> so maybe we should move away from that well, for, yeah, for they all get a big probably. head, you know? Um, since you have such pride in the construction itself, I mean, how do you feel when the community talks negatively about it? Because I feel like more than anything else in the game, the community does talk negatively about construction. I feel like most of the, the negative talking that they do on construction um, is pretty unfounded. I think it comes from people who don't want to see change um, and don't want to adapt to change. Um, and so they'd rather just uh, complain about something and hope that it goes away rather than trying to learn and, and see where it goes from there. I think a lot of the people that have problems with it um, – kind of founded their opinions um, long before any changes were made. Um, so I think a lot of the, you know, meat grinder comments or, or things like that um, don't really exist as much as they used to. Um, people saying that AI turrets are, uh, you know, the bane of all existence haven't really gone against an AI turret since the updates, because we did do some pretty heavy nerfs to those and um, made them less about um, automation and more about being effective if you're actually in the turret. Um, so I think, to me, I can write off a lot of the, the negative comments because it's just based on information that's outdated and information that just people aren't willing to, you know, try and give any chance to. So what you're really saying is that if you haven't played construction lately, you should? I would say give it a shot. Um, I mean, the, the costs for pretty much everything were reduced in terms of quartium costs. Um, the cert prices for some of the stuff got removed or got reduced. So I, I just feel like um, as a whole, it's a, a much better system than it was before. And, and um, people should really give it a shot rather than just complaining without actually seeing. So that segues me kind of next. And um, I, I got the, the PS4 folks who do listen to my show would yeah. be upset with me if I didn't ask the question. But do we have any state of construction for the PS4? And, I mean, we have the information from the past saying, you know, it's such a resource drain uh, on the PS4 side that other things need to change first. But I'm just wondering what the what the current status is, I guess. Yeah, unfortunately, it's pretty much in the, uh, a holding pattern. Um, I guess we did say on the stream specifically that we want to bring in Ants um, yes. into the game and we want to bring in Cordium at the very least into the game. But we may uh, still prevent building and, and prevent construction as a whole. Um, I think that's probably going to be the direction that we're going. Um, I don't... The, the biggest problem, I think, is that um, the PS4s in general just can't handle um, having full construction builds around them uh, and whatnot, and it'll basically just lag you into oblivion, mm-hmm. uh, which is just not something that we want, personally. Well, I agree. I, I, I play occasionally on the PS4, and there's certainly instances currently where it kind of lags an awful lot compared to PC side. So I, yeah. I completely understand what you, what, uh, what you and everybody else We're definitely else still listening to a lot of the lag also. I yeah. want to point out and, and kind of say that, state that for the record is that, you know, um, PS4 is still very much a thing that we're focused on or not focused on, but, um, is very much in, in the front of our minds and that we're trying to, um, make it not, uh, make make it better in general. We've done a lot of fixes recently to kind of remove some of the stuttering and, and those kinds of problems. But at the same time, you know, it's so much harder to, de- to debug than on live per, uh, per se. What you're trying to say is that the PS4 is not the redheaded stepchild of Daybreak Games. No, yeah. no, it's not. It's definitely something that we, we recognize and we understand. It's just 
the, the problems that happen on PS4 a lot of times are much harder to track down and much harder to fix. So, Do you get a chance to play Planetside 2 on the PS4 at all? So I'm not much of a console player. Neither am I. <laughs> um, I. I haven't gotten to play it on PS4. Um, I don't actually have a console anymore. I used well, to, but I don't anymore. Now my listeners are going to hear this, and you're going to the console is going to end up on your doorstep. Oh dear! <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I I don't. Um, I just don't like controls controllers as a whole. Um, I much prefer my mouse and keyboard. Uh, I am a I've mouse never, and keyboard player too. Yeah, and it, I've the, never gotten used to controllers, man. It just doesn't feel right. No, um, I mean, uh, I think the probably the one game I've played the most with a controller is some of the Halo games. Sure. And even those just feel so foreign to me as compared to a mouse and keyboard. I think that I would yeah. do so much better in in any of those games if I could just play it with a mouse and keyboard. And, Absolutely. And, and I don't want to do... I, I don't want to cheat by buying one of those... What are the, the... They have the hardware that you can put a mouse and keyboard yeah, on have them. Yeah, special, special things you can plug your mouse and keyboard in. I think is is what you're you're talking about. Yeah, I, I forget what they're called. Um, there, there's a couple different ones out there, but yeah, I don't want to be called a cheater on the, on the PS4 for doing I mean, something I, like I that. I get called a cheater on PC enough. I don't need to get called a <laughs> cheater on the PS4. <laughs> so, um, I guess let's move along a little. Let, let's move away from the PS4, and I want to just go back towards the community itself because they've really taken to you. I mean, you are the golden boy in their eyes right now. I mean, what? how did that happen? What did you do? Um, I think, well, it's a few things. Um, I, I feel like I'm the golden boy for now until I have to tell them no. Until you fuck uh, something up they, really bad and they, and they all find out. Me. <laughs> um, yeah. No, I, I think in reality, um, a lot of it is just because I come from a very competitive background. Um, and the first few things I did when I started playing Planet Side. Um, was I immediately jumped into Jaeger, and I started playing on Jaeger with people very quickly. Um, so I kind of got my my name out there for the people who play more competitively, and that kind of like a, a ripple effect kind of spread throughout the rest of the game. Yeah, I don't want to say that the Jaeger players are the better players in Planet Side 2, but I think that the majority of them are more passionate players. Does that make sense? I, I think actually some of the live players have a lot of passion. I, I think so too, but I, I I think somebody who's willing to not only play on live, but then also get together and set up scrims and set up uh, like lane smash, play in lane smash stuff or things like that are, are willing to invest a little bit more into the game. And I, maybe a passion is not the best word for it, but yeah, I, I know where you're coming from. It's, um, they're definitely good people and they're definitely good for learning the ropes and learning how to, you know, shoot and, and all of those different things. Oh God. Um, yes. I think, that, <laughs> yeah, right. Um, I, I feel like, uh, there's a lot of times though, when some of the rules and stuff that they have to prevent cheese and, and, uh, whatnot kind of, um, it kind of leaves the game a little less than on live. Mm-hmm. Like personally, from my perspective, I really love, you know, when you're you're going into a base and you're fighting a base and you see a mosquito flying overhead or you see reavers or, um, you know, scythes or all of these things flying overhead or, you know, having tanks fighting each other in the battle across the way. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I just think that that adds so much more flavor to the game than just shooting, you know? Well, there's a reason it's a combined arms game. Right, exactly. You know, that, that's what draws me to Planet Side 2, at least, is the fact that at any time I can drop into a game, I can play infantry if I want to, and then at some point later if I decide, oh, I want to go pull you know, lightning or something and play that for a couple hours, I can, and I'll still find everything that I'm looking for in Planet Side 2. I, I can't fly, so I'm well, not even going to... Neither gonna, can I, so not even, don't, don't worry about that. Not even going to mention that, but the fact that there is basically three completely, and four if you count the construction game, there's four separate you know silos of planet side 2 that you can play at any time and you can swap amongst the four at any time as well that's yeah exactly that's kind of why i I love planet side 2 and that's that's why i'm still here yeah you know and that's what keeps people around for six years seven years um i i feel like if if i wanted to just stick uh strictly to the shooting i'd probably go back to overwatch i'd probably you know go play black ops or those kinds of things because i feel like um 
when those are isolated, they're very good games. Not to say that um, Planetside's gunplay is bad because it's phenomenal, um, but I, I feel like playing games that are focused on um, arena shooters or, or those kinds of shooters in general, I think is um, it's not really the point of the game. The game is, is everything rather than just one element of the game. It, it definitely is. But that, now I've got to ask the question, what, what's your favorite Overwatch character? Oh, I'm a D.Va one trick. <laughs> okay, well, I uh, I got to Grandmaster playing D.Va, so. Oh, okay. I can I can see that. I'm a Junkrat main, but. Oh, of course you are. <laughs> of course. I, why do you say that? Oh, junkrat, Junkrat, Junkrat. Uh, all I know is that I went to to PAX East before they released the game. I sat down at the table for this brand new game I'd never heard of before. And looked through the characters and said, "Oh, Junkrat! He plays just like the uh, the the guy from Team Fortress Two with the grenades." Yeah, the demo man. The demo man. I'm so I love the demo yeah. man. I already know how to play this class. Jumped in, sat down with you know completely random people I'd never played with before. First place game of the match, three straight games. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was a Junkrat main from then on in. That's absolutely. That's what I actually started. have. Uh, I have a few thousand hours in Team Fortress as well, so. I played quite a bit of that, and I played that competitively. Yeah, I didn't do anything like that. It's um, a lot of fun. I'm just, I I know you're big into this, into the competitive scene because clearly you've said it multiple times now that you're you're into competitive this, competitive that. Um, tell me more about why you're into the competitive scene because uh, it's just not for me. I'm because I'm bad. That's really what it is. Maybe I just need more practice, yeah. but. I would I would say uh, for me the biggest thing is that um, if you're playing live or you're playing you know uh, in a casual environment a lot of people don't take it as seriously um, and so for myself I really enjoy playing with competitive people because they often take it a lot more seriously and and I feel like as a, as a person I can improve and and um, just get better in general with with everything with callouts with movement with play style with positioning all of it just throws me you know miles further than what i would have done if i'd spent the same amount of time on live or um you know in a casual environment like playing quick play in in overwatch you'll get six dps over and over and over and over but the moment that you open up ranked suddenly it's two 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 and everybody's playing tanks healers and dps all all the amount so Mm -hmm. it's um for me it's just that like i feel like in competitive you can play the game the way it's meant to be played a little more than um than if you were to play it in uh, more of a casual setting in general i'm not gonna lie there's also times when i feel like i'm an old man playing a young man's game <laughs> well that's why i'm 25 and you're not so uh i know like i said i'm i'm easily <laughs> old enough to be your i'm probably the same age as your dad do you know how oh, old yeah. your dad is roughly roughly i'm 44 okay he's older than that so. okay he's older than that. he's probably the same age as my wife then so my wife's gonna turn 50 this year so uh, no, he's he's uh, fifty four, I think. Oh, so okay, then never mind. But I'm still old enough older, to be your dad, <laughs> so you will listen to what I say, or oh, you're going to really? go to your room. I'd say one v one me, but you'd probably still win. No, I don't. I don't think so. <laughs> I'm starting to get carpal tunnel in my wrist. I don't know. I'm just I'm falling apart here. I'm not going to lie. Um, so all I've been talking about is stuff that you're good at. What are you not good at in life? Uh, social situations. Social. <laughs> You're doing fine at this. Well, yeah, well, because um, it's behind a computer screen. Is that why? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> behind a computer screen is much easier. No, I, I think a lot of it is is um, yeah. I think my biggest weaknesses are how much uh, pressure I put on myself, and and often the amount of anxiety that comes from that. So I can hear that's that's common for people in this industry or these doing playing these games things like that i I think that's a that's a very common thing right now so don't feel too bad about it (laughs) because i mean you'll just go to the doctor someday and he'll prescribe a pill to you and exactly for for your anxiety or or whatever and you'll be fine and then i'll be perfect right (laughs) then you'll be perfect (laughs) either that or they'll they'll put us into robots like in uh, like like in that chappy movie or whatever Oh, uh, yeah. We should say we're not already, though. God, don't blow my mind. It's it's almost 10 o'clock on a Sunday night, and I've been driving for hours. Don't oh, don't don't blow my mind like Let's that. Put that seed into your head. Oh, God. I'm going to have to... I'm going to lie awake tonight 
saying, Drew, Drew asked me this. Do I really think this? Oh, God. I'm gonna, or, or I'm going to Google it and go down a rabbit hole. Yeah, exactly. And be up till four in the morning trying to figure out if we're actually robots right now or not. So uh, uh, let's let's kind of move away from that topic if we possibly can. Um, and I want to know, and, and this is just going to be the definitive right now, uh, favorite faction for Planet Side 2? Oh, I'm a TR main through and through. Really? Yeah. I picture I you as VS. The striker. the striker and the um, MSWR and the bull and, you know, the Banshee, even though I can't fly, you know, it just makes me feel really good with myself. Wow. So, I really pegged you as VS. Yeah, no, my highest character right now is TR. Um, I'm up to nearly 70 so far. Wow. My mind is blown again. <laughs> Two questions in a row. I, I, didn't, I didn't picture that. Damn. Well, you... I don't think any of us uh, at the office are actually VR main or VS main. Really? Yeah. Huh. Rel Rel spends most of his time on TRNC. Um, I know Garrett's favorite character is NC. Well, Garrett's good. I like him. Garrett's pretty good. He's a good <laughs> sniper. <laughs> oh well, that's kind of changing it. My my, my best <laughs> character is NC too, but yeah. Um, so you named a few weapons. What's your favorite weapon? Is it the bull? No, it's probably the MSWR. MSWR, yeah. That's, that seems it's, to be it's most so of our players. It, it feels so good to fire. It is a good weapon, I won't lie. Uh, so is Heavy your favorite class? Um, I've actually been playing a lot more Infiltrator recently. Mm -hmm. um, kind of playing the more utility. Uh, Intel is really, really powerful in this game, and so trying to use that to my advantage is, is really... Um, I've been playing more... Uh, both close quarters bolt sniping on Connery because that feels great when you have 20 ping and you can just headshot everybody. <laughs> um, but also I've been playing some Tomoe uh, and some also SMG infiltrator. Um, I do pull out heavy, you know, when I feel like I need to kind of play a little more try hard and, and uh, you know, guarantee win fights. I'll, I'll play a lot more heavy and, and uh, try, but it's a lot more fun for me to play Infiltrator. Hmm, interesting. Well, gift yourself uh, the Derringer pistol and then <laughs> then talk to me about Infiltrator yeah, class. I haven't yet quite. Well, I know you can. Just flip a switch yeah, and boom, you've I'll, got it. I'll consider it. I mean, I'm a big, en I'm a big uh, engineer player. That's my favorite class. It's been my favorite yeah. class forever. And just the fact with ASP allowing me to basically play as a heavy uh, engineer – because I've got the LMGs now on the on yeah, the engineer. It's a little ridiculous. <laughs> I feel so overpowered, and especially when I get hate tells in game saying, "You can't use that weapon. Why are you <laughs> cheating?" That's oh, happened. Oh, I had someone report you to me the other uh, or a few weeks. Ago. You did not. I did for that they, reason. Uh, they sent me a message saying you were like level thirty or forty or something, and you were using LM <laughs> on your engineer. It was hilarious. <laughs> I remember that night because he was in yell chat. Yeah, he was. It was uh, when we were playing with... Uh, I don't know who we were playing with. It was NC. We were playing with uh, VCO, yeah, we maybe? With, no, I don't think it was VCO. I think it was... Oh, I guess it was. It was Walmart, huh? Yeah, and, and somebody did... I didn't realize that they messaged you personally saying that yeah. I was cheating. It was great. Well, I, I need a screenshot of that so I can print it out and put it on my wall because I get very few <laughs> accusations uh, except for that. Uh, so you mu the Mosquito must be your favorite vehicle then, huh? Oh, I'm a terrible Mosquito player. So, no, I actually, um, I really enjoy her. Uh, her Racer gameplay is a lot of fun, and I've been playing with the Ecos guys and um, some of the FedEx guys on, on occasion, rarely, uh, but playing with them has been a lot of fun. I've played with the Ecos guys before. They they do things with harassers that I don't think were ever possible. <laughs> and Until you see them do it, yeah. It's just crazy stuff that they do. And uh, I I say to anybody listening, if you want to know how to figure out how to use a, a harasser, Ecos, FedEx, those guys know what the hell they're doing. It, Definitely. I always get scared when I see an Ecos group or a FedEx group coming around over the hill. Yeah, because then you're like shit. Well, I've already lost. I might as well redeploy. You know, <laughs> may as well just leave. I'll go into my tech plant where you can't get me. Yeah, exactly. I'll go into my tech plant. I love tech plants. So do I. They're a lot of fun. 
They're they're one of the best fights in the game, I have to say. There's so many ways to assault it. There's so many ways to get into it. There's so many ways to defend it. I don't know. I like tech plants a lot. So let's talk about the future, because I know everybody's been listening to this show and saying, my God, Derringer, my God, Mark, they just had a freaking live stream four days ago, and you haven't mentioned it once. So now we're going to get into the real meat of the show, you know, 40 minutes into it. <laughs> Direct X 11. Yeah. That's it's really going to make a change to Planet Side 2. So, yeah, it will. It, it, um, it won't do much for the actual appearance of it. It shouldn't actually change much in terms of how you see things. Though it might be a little more, um, a little more vibrant. I feel like the colors are a little more vibrant on the DX. Is it just going to be FPS related though? It's mostly FPS related, yeah. um, and gives us a bit more for optimization in general. Um, and then it also potentially gives us some more debugging tools and stuff like that as well. Okay. I, I was going to say, you know, ELI 5 it to me, what is DX11? Because I don't know, <laughs> being not so in the industry. I'm 5 as well. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't I don't understand too much about it. But um, from what I've understood with talking with Garrett and a few other people about it, um, the biggest difference is that... So hold on, I should just end this interview and go get Garrett <laughs> yeah, on? Is that what you're Garrett, saying? That's fine. <laughs> uh, feel free. Um, he's a great guy. He rock climbs. Um so oh, he uh he's a better guy than I am already. <laughs> <laughs> no, so he um he was explaining to me that basically how it works is that um right now with DirectX 9 every time you want to draw anything for the player, um it's its own separate draw call. So it's it's saying I want to draw a wall and then I also want to draw this wall and then I also want to draw, you know, this person and on the person I want to draw the helmet and the armor and all of these different things, right? And so you get, you know, thousands of draw calls as a whole, right? Mm -hmm. Um but the um, with DirectX 11, it batches all of that. So it's a single call rather than, you know, a thousand, essentially. Interesting. Do you th is it, is it going to affect or, or be beneficial for multi-core machines as well? I think so. Huh. Um, I'm not super well-versed on it, and I probably should have gotten well-versed. That, that's okay. We, uh, don't, we don't need to go yeah. too deep into it. I mean, clearly it's a huge thing because this was the you know, on-screen mic drop that, that yeah. Nick did. So. This is something we've been, we've been holding back and, and wanting to talk about for months and months and months. Um, but we've, we wanted to get it into a situation where it was close to being able to be put on test. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's pretty much our next goal that's going to be happening is first we've got, we, we have now Black Ops on test, so we'll get that. We'll, we'll probably talk about that. Which a I've bit. been playing. It's it's interesting, huh? Yeah. <laughs> um, there's a lot of bugs with it. And uh, we'll of course. Those for sure. Um, but we want to get that out on test as well. So we want to get DX11 and, and Black Ops on, on test um, so that we can really, you know, hit it with as much curiosity as we can i suppose um and just get people hammering on it to to give us as many bugs as we can to to fix and i i spent a bit of time on the dx11 build internally and then worked with um, a couple other teams in terms of fixing and optimizing a few of the things already so we're already off on a good start to that it's just kind of a slow process i mean if if we can get just a a, a decent fps increase coupled with being able to take advantage more of multi-core processors, because let's face it, everybody has a multi-core processor yeah. right now who's playing. I mean, that could be huge. I know there's lots of people not playing Planet Side 2, not for um, being dissatisfied with the game, but being dissatisfied with the way the game runs. So sure. to for get sure. some of those people back into the game and potentially being paying members of the game... Um, yeah, it would do it would do a lot for us um, in reality. I think these two announcements that we did, um, I think, should kind of spark some flames underneath people again, um, and kind of give them a reason to come back and, and couple that with Osher, and that kind of gives us a like a three pronged attack to hit as many people as we can. To yeah, it's a, that's definitely a one two three punch right there. Because uh, again, the next thing is you know Black Ops, like you said, everybody's gonna everybody who's a member, that's. That's I've been screaming for an additional membership perk. Yeah, absolutely. For a while now, and for you guys to just throw that out there and say, "Hey, look, this is going to be membership only." You know, my, my you blew my mind <laughs> when you guys yeah. said that because I was like, "Holy shit." You know, finally something additional. I mean, don't get me wrong, you guys offer a lot of value 
with the membership that it is in itself, especially because you get access to every other stable of games that Daybreak Games does. Absolutely. You know, I mean, but that, I, I do think, I, I mean, I agree with you 100% that when you just look at it from a planet side perspective, it's, mm-hmm. it's not, or at, at the time, it, it's it's probably not as much as a lot of people would like for the $15 a month or, or however much people are paying based on the how much they're spending per. Um, but, you know, I I really do feel like it's um, it's gonna be better, and I, I think that um, Black Ops as a whole, especially with the fact that you you don't get, you know, uh, we were really worried with Black Ops originally because Black Ops in Planet Side One had extra health and extra damage and yes, they extra did. Movement speed, I think, and they, they uh, were they were very different than this. Yes, so, <laughs> so we wanted to make something that um, was fun and was interesting for a lot of people. But um, wasn't um, wasn't really overpowered. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's something that's more of a oh cool now I can play on one server and just run one character on that server rather than I can play you know three different characters on one server and three different on another and, mm-hmm. and whatnot. So potentially it makes it easier for members and it also potentially reduces queue times and um, should make fights in general a lot more 50 50 which is usually better for the majority of the population i mean you do have to look like a robot i mean it's a pretty sweet robot well, some so. people may not like that i mean let's let, let's be honest some people I'm might not injured. aren't we all robots <laughs> no <laughs> i i'm not a robot i'm not I'm a, a robot, robot. I, i'm not robot yet yet yeah i mean i am you know you don't know everything about me but when i was in high school i I broke my arm really bad. So, I mean, I do have um, metal objects in my arm currently. So, uh, I see. I, see. I think so that soon, I'm probably. Soon you become a robot. I, I'm probably like one one hundredth robot already. There you go. If yeah. that makes sense. So, eventually you'll become Black Ops on your own, right? <laughs> and just, just watch out. Make sure I don't come to California. <laughs> you'll be happy well, I'm on the other side the of the country. the MC version. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Well, you won't be able to tell the difference be- between me and VS anyways right now. So, you know, oh. mm-hmm. till you work on those color schemes. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, there's there's going to be some changes. We'll see. So. I want them outlined in a color. You yeah, know, that would should, be really cool. It should be just like an infiltrator, except not hidden. You know, out, outlined <laughs> in, in, the, them up. in the color, just light them up so everybody can see them. Yeah, that, that won't be unfair or anything like no, that. No, not at all. Uh, I, I am excited for Black Ops. You know, I'm not going to lie. A huge membership perk as far as I'm concerned. And I, I also kind of wasn't surprised to see people in the live stream complaining that uh, Black Ops is now pay to win. What the, what the fuck are they talking about? Yeah, it's not. It's yeah, not, the, it's not so even close to pay to win. You, you can't even make it. No. Uh, that, it, it's not. And anybody who's doing that is an idiot. Hmm. I mean, I'll show you pay to win. If I mean, you guys could show them pay to win. Oh, for sure. If they for really sure. want to see pay to win, I mean, because it's if certainly you want not... pay to win. Go look at Korean MMOs. Um, In reality, that's yeah. the biggest thing. Now, I do have one small complaint about the the uh, Black Ops, and uh, you're going to be the first one to hear it. So okay. strap yourself in. I am not happy that they are going to get the NS Auto Blade knife. Yeah, I wonder if that's more of a placeholder than anything else. Well, that would be good because I feel really special being one of the very few people with the NS Auto Blade. You know, I I busted my butt to go to SOE Live to earn that, along with my dollar bill camo. So when I saw that on the stream, I was like, oh, crap. There goes my (laughs) exclusivity. I mean... Yeah, I'm being an asshole. I'm not going to lie. Paint it orange and say it's not actually the auto blade, and then you can. Keep- I, like I said, I'm being a di- I'm being a, an entitled entitled prick here. Is really what it comes down to. And I'll uh, I'll talk to Rel about it. We'll get it. We'll get it solved. You'll get it so everybody can have it, not just the robots. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that, we'll that, just make it a thing on the marketplace for ten bucks. And- oh God, that I, I'd cry. <laughs> I really would. I'd cry. You sell the dollar bill camo for a dollar. Oh my dollar God, bill. I would. I would rage. <laughs> I really would rage if that happened. Again, I'm just being an entitled prick. That's all there is to it. But I would rage so hard. <laughs> It'd be pretty good. Um, let's get back on topic. I'm sorry. I just I, I saw it and I was kind of saw red a little bit. And... <laughs> 
and and I shouldn't because these things should be free and open for everybody to enjoy, not just me in my special uh, little bubble. You know, I mean, I'll admit it on on EverQuest, I have titles that no one else has and things like that because you know I completed achievements or went to things that that uh, no one else went to, and so it is it is definitely like a kind of badge of pride. Well, don't change anything just on account of me, because then I would feel bad. So just, I'm just we'll going to throw it out there. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, I guess the last thing I want to ask you about is that is is just your thoughts on Osher itself, because Osher was my most anticipated thing in 2019, and of course now uh, Black Ops is my anti- most anticipated thing. But I don't want to poo poo Osher at all because coming out with a whole new continent is going to be friggin' huge for you guys. Yeah. It's also a lot of work. Um, map design as a whole is, is very difficult and, and takes a lot of time. Um, it's kind of a slow process and there's been a lot of things right now that have kind of slowed us down. Um, a lot of the huge performance hits and things like that, that we've had to deal with um, have kind of paused any work that we've done on it right now. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's definitely still in our minds. We definitely want to get it done. It's just, Right now, it can't be the number one priority. We can't stop all design work for us to just work on that for the next six months, right? We have to actually have other things happening and and be working on a lot of different things all at the same time. Um, And I think Black Ops was kind of our our big thing that we wanted to announce before the end of the year. So we kind of, um, we announced Osher, but it was very much in a, here's a thing that we're going to be doing. It's probably going to be happening more next year than, than this year. And we'll get to it when we get to it and not that it's back rendered but it's um it's definitely not our first priority right now and that's understandable because because like you just said you can't you know drop everything to work on that for and i know you threw out the the arbitrary six months i know that's not that's not an actual date no it's not an actual date i want to make sure i say that and you can confirm that it's not an actual date but then of course if you if you did do something like that, then you'd have nothing for me to talk about on a podcast. And kind for of, sure, I'd be no, wasting my time each week just sitting here trying to scour up. Oh, gosh, uh, you'd be so bored for the next six months. I, I'd be scouring, you know, random topics to talk about. I'd probably have to have somebody else do the show if if that really happened. You could talk about Reddit drama, right? Yeah, well, uh, we'd need to stir up a little more Reddit drama. Maybe we could that could be that pay to win. Go stuff. do it right now if you'd like. You'd uh. Just throw, <laughs> throw out a pay to win topic out there, you know. And stir up some drama oh, yeah. for me for great. for the next show because that would Membership be awesome. Membership damage increased by ten percent. Oh, that would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wouldn't. <laughs> well, I, I'm a member. Remember, it would be it would be right, great. Right. You know, just tweak some numbers. You yeah, know, imagine how mad people would be. Oh my god, they'd be furious. They, that would be more than Reddit drama. That would be. Oh yeah. Yeah, you can't do something like that. So let's no. just. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to strike that conversation from the podcast. <laughs> we'll cut that completely, yeah. <laughs> no, we're going to leave everything in. We, we don't cut anything. No, nothing stays on the, on the, on the floor afterwards. It's going to be a, it's gonna be a long conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll be dragged in and browbeaten. It'll be like oh, the, no. you know, they'll have you under the light, you know. Yeah, or else what did you be do? So <laughs> what did you say? What did you say? So... And then he'll have to have a discussion with you saying, this is how you do a podcast. You know. You're not allowed to talk to the the people anymore. You can't be part of the community anymore <laughs> or anything like that. Oh, um, that's going to be great. So I've run out of questions for you because, you know, you've asked a lot of cool things. But I was, was wondering if you would like to be um, – just do a live section of uh, emails. Uh, Sure. So I got a couple emails this week. Um, well, one of them I can't read. Well, no, one of them, yeah. Well, let's start with this one. So I got, I have a, a listener who always listens. Uh, his name's Matt Nine. Uh, and he writes, uh, Now that news of the wild week is over, I'm sure you talked about DX11 and the Nanite Terminators during the show. Uh, oh, and he wants to know, what was my Agent Nutbox to Agent Nimbles? thing at the beginning of the show do you know anything about that no i have no idea yeah that's a secret thing that i can't talk about so um i guess this, it has nothing to do with me no it, it well it does that. it does oh, you no. just don't know it you'll oh, you'll no. find out eventually don't don't worry 
Uh, but otherwise, Matt Nine wants to wish you and everybody at Daybreak Games uh, happy Thanksgiving, and also a happy sixth birthday. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. It's been that that long so far. Though and, for us, it's been less than that. Um, Tuesday is my one year anniversary. That's right. I meant to mention that in the beginning to say happy anniversary uh, for Thank being you. with uh, Daybreak Games. Uh, I've been it with the felt company I'm at that. for 18 years, so... Oh, man, got a few few years on me. So. Yeah, let's just say that the stock options have not rolled in yet, because <laughs> I have not been there long enough. Oh, man. So I do have one other email. It's a long one, but so I'm not going to read the whole thing. But uh, another one of my faithful listeners is Louie. Uh, he plays with 40 Deuce on Connery. You ever played with yeah, him before? Yeah, I know Louie, actually. I used to play with him in EverQuest originally. You do know Louie. Okay, so Louie uh, knew that you were coming on the show. Uh, and he says that since the uh, during the, the sixth year anniversary stream, Rel mentioned that each dev can use their own time in December on their own projects. Uh, he has a project for you, and he wants you to bring back lockable silos in December. Ha. Huh. Um, that's probably not likely. Okay, Lou, um, you heard it. I feel like, yeah, I feel like silos as a whole are, um, the amount of griefing that people worry about, uh, is, is much higher than the amount of griefing that actually occurs. Um, uh, very rarely have I seen people actually being griefed, uh, in terms of doing construction specifically. Um, that being said, I will be spending a lot of my December time, um, working on, some of the construction stuff and doing some more quality of life things for um, some of the other construction things and um, just making things flow a little better than, than before. So I like the fact that you're going to dip back into construction and not completely forget about it. Yeah. I mean, I, so, you know, when I had started on construction, I didn't know much about the systems in general and about how a lot of them, you know, work and, and, mesh um and now that i've spent a year on it and i understand a lot more than just construction as a whole um i feel like i can take a second look at it um and kind of give it a little bit more of a facelift and kind of just make the systems run a little more smoothly than they do interesting good good i like that you're able to say what you're going to be working on in december too i I also like the fact that you guys get to just choose what to work on in in a, a whole month well, it's not an entire month because we've got the Christmas break and. Um, Wait, you, know, you get a Christmas break? Hold on here. Well, not not entirely a break. It's <laughs> I get break. one day. Oh no, we get more than that. Welcome to the games industry. <laughs> we get a lot of days off. It's nice. Oh, man, I'm in the wrong industry. Something like that. Speaking of, if you you can go back to Nick with this one. And he'll probably listen to this show too because I'm sure he's gonna he does. he's gonna pour through this and make sure that everything that you say is on the level and you didn't release. Well, they anything. do every every week, so just so you know, oh, great. Yeah, avid listeners. <laughs> no, no pressure or anything. Um, well, then if Nick's gonna listen to this himself, I don't have to even tell you. But if you guys need me to voice any robot stuff, I'm sitting right here and my beautiful voice. I'll be happy to voice yeah, any robot stuff if he wants to reach out to me. I want Rel to do all of it. I think that would be great. That would be awesome. As monotone as possible. People would rage. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) All right. So that's that's all I've got for you today. Um, Thank you for just taking about an hour out of your time. Yeah, thank you for having me. I uh, I really appreciate it. To come on and just chat with me. I I think people want to know more about you because you're, like I said, one of the new new kids on the block. We, I should go throw up an, an AMA on Reddit. I think that would be. Fun. That would we'll actually be that. that would be a good idea. I think we'll see. <laughs> there have to be a few few rules, a few things I can't talk about yet. Yeah, you guys, uh, just, not just you, but uh, in general, there hasn't been an AMA uh, Planet Side really. Year. Yeah, I was gonna say it's been about a year since since we yeah, had. I remember. Uh, I remember having just moved down here, and I remember reading it on my phone while I was. Um, about a week before actually so you could learn everything that you needed to know as much as i could about what was going on but uh yeah no i i do really appreciate you taking some time and hopping on the podcast with me and uh telling me all about yourself because uh, like i said people are excited to know more about you and i think that i learned a lot about you today as well <laughs> um, well i'm i'm 
I try and be as much of an open book as I can because I think it's important for the relationship between developer and community to really like have a big impact. Um, I think the the one thing for me was when I was younger and not a developer yet, um, when I used to play EverQuest a lot more, I felt like we kind of put the developers up on a pedestal and, and yeah. kind of didn't even think of them as human. And I, I think that that, you know, that pedestal needs to go away and it needs to be kind of, you know, face to face. Um, I'm not any more powerful than anybody else. I'm just a designer. So this is my job. This is what I do, but it's also something that I love. And the game as a whole is something that I love. So, well, you know, aren't we all robots anyways? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And with that, I think we'll end this uh, this episode of the podcast. Again, thanks for coming on, Drew. And, uh, yeah, thank d- you so much. Don't be a stranger. I won't. <laughs> All righty. So that's it for this week's show. And how can you get in touch with me or the show itself? Well, as always, your first stop should be my website, www.instantactionpodcast.com, where I didn't get a chance to mention at the beginning of this week's show is that Cyber Monday is today. So uh, you guys would be doing me a huge solid if you went to my website, hit that support the show tab, used my Amazon link and made all your Cyber Monday purchases using my Amazon link link that would be huge for me otherwise like i said you can also email me at instantactionshow at gmail.com you can call me leave me a voicemail 347-4vm4ps2 that's 347-486-4772 follow the show on twitter at instact podcast or follow me on twitter at the derringer but in closing if you've enjoyed the show please leave me a review on your podcast listening avenue of choice whether it's itunes stitcher google play or anywhere else else also feel free to tell your friends and outfit mates about the show and finally thanks for listening and keep spamming that join combat formerly known as instant action button Ah, suck my nuts. Get your arms combined.